think we're on chapter three this week. Um, Romans is an incredible book. And there's a number of transitions in the book of Romans. And in a few places, the transitions begin with the word therefore. And the first 11 chapters of Romans talk about what God has done for us so that we can be in relationship with him. And then it, transi it transitions with the word therefore into, now because of what God has done for you and for I, here's how we can respond to him and how we can participate in this relationship. And uh, as we go through Romans and see what God has done, um, we read about how we find relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. And this morning we have the privilege of sharing communion together and receiving it together. And as we take communion, it's a symbol, it's an ordinance that reminds us of what God has done for us and what Jesus has done in going to the cross and that his death and his resurrection made it possible for you and for I to be in right relationship with God and that is God's desire is that we would be in relationship with him. And so I want to read uh, the first 11 verses of Romans 5 and as I read these, Let's be seeing these verses through the lens of sharing communion together and thinking about what it is that we practice when we eat this bread and when we drink this cup and what it means to us. We know that when Jesus was with his disciples, he said to them, every time you eat bread, every time you take this cup, be reminded, remember me and what I've done for you, that my body was broken for you, that my blood was spilt for you, so that we can be in relationship, so that you can be right with my Father. So let's look at these verses in Romans 5. This is what it says. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, through Jesus, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And, now, and we now rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, Sorry, since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled will we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This morning as we take communion, we recognize that we've been justified through what Jesus has done for us. That we've been reconciled to God because of what Jesus did for you and for me on the cross and through his resurrection. And so this morning, as we take communion in just a minute, I'll invite you to just come up and take the cup and take the bread and take it back to your seat and, and just reflect on what Jesus has done. And then once everybody's seated together, we will take the elements together. Um, this is an open table, which means this. Christ calls all of his disciples, all of his followers, those who have chosen to believe through faith in him and have relationship with God to practice this to take communion regularly, to remember what he has done. So if you're here this morning and you're a follower of Christ, you would say, I have chosen to be a disciple of Jesus, to give my life to him and follow him, then this is for you and I invite you to participate. If you're here this morning and, and you would say, that's not me, I'm just trying to figure out who God is and, and what this is about, then I want to invite you just to to stay seated and just to observe and to watch as those who have chosen to follow Christ practice in this symbol, in this ordinance of remembering what Jesus has done. And that's totally fine. And I encourage you to just um, 
to watch what is taking place. But for those of you who are disciples of Jesus, this is for you this morning um, to remember what God has done in sending his son Jesus and the sacrifice that Jesus made so that we can be in relationship with him. That's his desire for us. So let me pray. And then as you're ready, just come forward and take the elements and take them back to your seat. And then I'll come back up once everyone is seated again and uh, just lead us in receiving them, okay? Let's pray. Father, this morning... Again, I thank you for your word, and as we read in your word, um, you've made it clear to us what you have done for us so that we can be in relationship with you. So this morning, I thank you. We thank you that you have made it possible for us to be justified, for us to be reconciled to you, that you've made a way for our sins to be dealt with, the sins that separate us from a perfect and holy God, because you love us because we're precious to you, because we're made in your image and we're made for you to be in relationship with you. So God, as we take these elements this morning, we want to remember. We want to engage with our minds and our intellect and with our hearts and our emotion um, to give ourselves to remembering what you've done and again to say by taking communion that we identify ourselves with you. We belong to you. We're on your team. And God, we just thank you for this privilege. We thank you for Jesus who made this possible. Amen.